The new M2 MacBook Air is hot, hot, hot. Well, hot in terms of its popularity and also because the M2 chip can get a little bit toasty in this thin fanless design, which is why I want to take the opportunity to revisit this computer, the M2 MacBook Pro, which was immediately overshadowed even before the M2 MacBook Air was out because when these laptops were both announced alongside of each other, the M2 MacBook Air got all the fanfare because of its brand new design and a lot of new internals like new speakers, a new 1080p webcam, which this MacBook Pro did not receive. It basically just kept the same old design, still kept the touch bar. And the only real change was that this had the M2 chip inside of it. But there is one important distinction between the M2 MacBook Air and the M2 MacBook Pro, and that is that the M2 MacBook Pro has a fan, or as Apple calls it, an active cooling system to help cool off that M2 chip. So I wanted to see is this M2 MacBook Pro with this fan, will this fix some of the problems that we experienced on the M2 MacBook Air? And maybe should you reconsider the M2 MacBook Pro as a laptop that you should buy over the M2 Air? Now, the real crazy thing about all of this is, is that you might think that the M2 MacBook Air is cheaper, but these laptops are actually the same exact price with the same exact specs. So both of these have the 10 core GPU and they are both outfitted with the faster 512 gigabyte SSD drive. So they both retail for $1,500, meaning that the only difference between both of these machines when it comes to performance is that active cooling system. So by doing all these tests, we're actually gonna see how the MacBook Air would perform if Apple put a fan in it and if it was the right choice to omit a cooling system from this device. So normally the first test we would do is Geekbench, but let me tell you, right off the bat, the thing that you're gonna notice about the M2 MacBook Air and the M2 MacBook Pro is that for short workloads where you're not pushing these machines for a long period of time, they are going to have the same exact performance. The M2 chip in the MacBook Air and in this MacBook Pro are going to score exactly the same on a shorter benchmark like Geekbench. So immediately I wanna shift it over to a longer benchmark that is going to really peg the CPU for a prolonged period of time. So we're going to run a Cinebench benchmark and we're actually going to run it twice. So we're going to run it for 10 minutes uh, first on both of these machines, then we're going to run it for another 10 minutes after that initial score to see how much these machines thermal throttle under a sustained CPU workload. I'll also note that as I'm running these tests, by the end of the video, I'm also gonna show you the remaining battery life on both systems. And don't worry, I set both of these to the same exact brightness levels. So this will be a real uh, test of the battery life as well. All right, let's start with the first benchmark on the Cinebench multi-core benchmark. And we're about five minutes into this test so far, and I am just starting to slightly hear the fans spin up on the M2 MacBook Pro. And if I put my finger on both of these machines, yeah, the M2 MacBook Pro is definitely cooler than the M2 MacBook Air. This is actually getting a little bit hot right now. So we can already probably see that the uh, thermal throttling of the chip is probably gonna take place pretty soon on the MacBook Air but I'm, I'm sure with the MacBook Pro, considering it has the fan, it's much cooler, the score is probably gonna be higher right off the first benchmark. All right, the MacBook Pro just finished its first benchmark for Cinebench about 30 seconds ago. I actually started it right away so we could keep it going without giving it a chance to cool down, but it scored, as you can see here, an 8,719. And now the MacBook Air just finished. We're gonna start this right again as well. And we got a score of 8,145 here. So basically, even after the first benchmark with just about over you know, a little bit over 10 minutes of CPU usage on Cinebench, we can already see that the MacBook Air has already thermal throttled, but let's see what the results are after another 10 minute test. All right, and we just finished the second Cinebench benchmark, and as you can see, the MacBook Pro basically didn't thermal throttle at all. It just got one point lower than the last score. So this is 8,718. It sustained performance even after 20 minutes of intense CPU workload, where we can't say the same for the M2 MacBook Air. The score lowered even more than last time, and we now get a score of 7,691. So immediately off the bat with CPU usage, we can see that the uh, MacBook Air is gonna thermal throttle for sustained workloads. If it's a, if it's a short CPU burst, like, a, like a, something very short, the performance is gonna be the same, but if you're going for a long period of time, the MacBook Pro has the advantage. Now, before we get to GPU testing, uh, let's go ahead and just run the disk speed test real quick, just to make sure that these are exactly the same read and write speeds. These both have the faster 512 gigabyte drives, so they should be exactly the same. And I mean, the numbers are a little different, obviously, and they're gonna keep being a little different with every time these uh, 
go. But yes, the read and write speed on the MacBook Air and on the MacBook Pro are exactly the same. So the 512 gigabyte drive is faster in both of these machines compared to the 256 gigabyte drive. All right, let's start doing some GPU benchmarks. So for this test, we're gonna run the 4K Aztec Ruins high tier off screen. We're both gonna start now. Let's see, let's see, is, is the MacBook Pro actually gonna have an advantage here? All right, the benchmark just finished on both of these, and from what I can see, even though the MacBook Pro scores a little bit higher here with 48.75 frames per second versus the MacBook Air's 48.63 frames per second, uh, this is well within the margin of error. If we ran this test again, maybe the MacBook Air would win. So as I was saying before, when it's very optimized, uh, you can probably expect very similar results. And this was not a long test. This benchmark ran for, a, what, probably like a minute? So again, this is, again, showing you that for short bursts, the performance on these machines is going to be pretty much the same. All right, we're gonna get into a gaming benchmark in just a second, but first I wanted to add in a new benchmark. This is a Blender benchmark, which has to do with 3D modeling. I have no experience in 3D modeling, but uh, usually when I do these benchmarking videos, I usually primarily do video export tests, and ju that's just what I know. I, I video edit and I export all the time, so that's something I can actually talk about pretty well, but with uh, 3D modeling, I really have no experience, so I'm sure one of these is gonna give a higher score, and, th and then I guess that's the better one, but but uh, in terms of how this actually affects real world usage, I really can't say, but I did want to add the benchmark just so uh, if you do 3D modeling, maybe this might be helpful for you. So this is a benchmark that's just gonna run through three renders, and then I'm sure it's gonna give us a score at the end of it. Now, I believe Blender is optimized for Apple Silicon as well, just like GFX Bench, so we should probably see uh, similar results on both of these machines. All right, and the Blender benchmark just finished off. So again, it did three different scenes and you can see the results are a little different in each one. So on the first one, the Monster, the MacBook Pro got 70.53 samples per minute. The MacBook Air got 70.20. Uh, on the Junk Shop render, the MacBook Air actually beat out the MacBook Pro this time, getting 6.1, while the MacBook Pro got 5.53 samples per minute. And then again, we see uh, in Classroom that the MacBook Pro won this one, uh, getting 31 samples per minute, while the MacBook Air got 30 samples per minute. So like I said before, uh, Blender is optimized, it's, it was shorter. This ran for about, I think about like three minutes. And you could see that uh, the MacBook Pro won two of them, the MacBook Air won one of them, but the scores are so close, so within the margin of error that there's really no difference, at least for this shorter workload on this Blender benchmark. And that's good news for the MacBook Air. Okay, now let's get to the infamous Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, which where I did this in my last video with the 10 core M2 MacBook Air, we saw significant thermal throttling on this benchmark. So here's going to be the real test of the 13 inch MacBook Pro to see if it can actually sustain the performance. This benchmark is going to be run on medium settings and let's get to it. So it's important to note here, the benchmark just started, these scores are pretty much the same. Look at this, they're both around 50 frames per second in the beginning, and we're probably gonna see this score stay similar for a little while, but as this MacBook Air starts to heat up, I expect the scores to actually lower. So you can actually see, right now, this is a good test to show that the 10-core GPU has the same exact power in both of these machines. The only difference is gonna be the fan that could potentially help the MacBook Pro. And we're starting to see the thermal throttling take place. The MacBook Pro has a higher frames per second than the MacBook Air right now. You can see it's around 50 frames per second. The MacBook Air around 42 frames per second. So as this benchmark runs, the MacBook Air is getting hotter and it's not able to properly cool that M2 chip in it. And it has to throttle down that 10 core GPU. This is a pretty drastic difference. We're about 60 frames per second on the MacBook Pro. It's, it's now going down a little bit more but about 30 frames per second on the MacBook Air in this particular area. All right, and as the benchmark finishes, we can see that our theory was confirmed once again. So the MacBook Pro is gonna get a average frames per second of 48, while the MacBook Air gets an average frames per second of 40. And again, these both have the same 10 core GPU inside of them. The only difference is the fan in the MacBook Pro. 
Now, the reason why this really throttled down and why it really got hot on the MacBook Air is because this game is not optimized for Mac OS. It's running through the Rosetta translation layer, so it is going to heat up those GPU cores a lot more than something native running on Apple Silicon would. So uh, this is more of an extreme case, I guess, but listen, this is part of the disadvantages of going for a system like the MacBook Air. Now, I wanted to throw in another game to test here because in my last video, people were saying, why didn't you test another game? Maybe it was just something to do with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and people were telling me to test optimized games. I don't own a lot of optimized games, or maybe any optimized game on macOS that has a benchmarking tool, uh, but I do have um, Shadow of, what, Middle Earth, Shadow of Mordor, and this does have a benchmarking tool, but again, this is still running through the Rosetta translation layer, so it is not optimized for macOS, but it does have the benchmarking tool, so let's run this again. Uh, on medium settings and see what the results are. Now, I will note that when I've done these benchmarking tests in the past, that this benchmark is a much shorter benchmark than Shadow of the Tomb Raider, so it might not thermal throttle that much on this MacBook Air. These are pretty neck and neck. Uh, I think you can start to see this starting to thermal throttle as we get to the last part of it. Uh, as I said, this is a much shorter benchmark, so maybe it didn't give time for the MacBook Air to heat up, but if you were actually playing this game, you might run into different results. But you can already see just a little bit of thermal throttling on the MacBook Air. We get to this benchmark with it being 39.11 on the MacBook Pro and 35.65 frames per second on the MacBook Air. All right, now let's do our video export test. So we're going to be exporting a 10 minute 4K clip, a very simple clip, the same on both machines. And we're going to be exporting it first to H.264 and then again to ProRes. So let's go ahead and start this export. One, two, three, go. Hit the timer. Got that mastered perfectly at this point. So we're a little over a minute and 30 seconds into this export and these are both pretty much neck and neck. I think the MacBook Air is actually a little out ahead of the MacBook Pro, but I'm sure these are going to have very, very similar export times. And in my experience, when I've been editing 4K video on this MacBook Air, Final Cut Pro, uh, which is very, very optimized for these machines, does not really heat up the MacBook Air, even though it doesn't have the fan inside of it. So maybe we won't see any differences between these machines at all. It just goes to show you how well optimized applications run on the M2 MacBook Air. It's really coming down to the wire here. It is very close. I think the MacBook Air wins 502 seconds. The MacBook Air, uh, or the MacBook Pro at 504 seconds for the export. So very, very close. Again, these scores are so close within the margin of error. If you ran these both, uh, again, maybe the MacBook Pro would score faster this time. But yeah, it just goes to show you that uh, for video exports on Final Cut Pro to H.264, this MacBook Air still very well optimized, uh, but let's go ahead and rerun the test this time using ProRes. All right, we'll be exporting both of these to ProRes in three, two, one, go. Start the timer. It was a little sloppier that time. You'll have to forgive me for that. About a minute in and we are just seeing the slightest speed boost on the MacBook Pro this time. But again, they're so neck and neck. And this is so interesting. The MacBook Pro was winning, but look at this, the MacBook Air is catching up. It's actually beating the MacBook Pro now. Oh my God, this is gonna be another photo finish. Is the MacBook Air actually gonna beat this in both tests? I mean, it's so short, but oh, it's actually winning. Look at this, look at this. So the MacBook Air gets it at three minutes and 32 seconds and the MacBook Pro, three minutes and 39 seconds. So there you have it. Very interesting results with both the H.264 and the ProRes export. I do believe these are still within the margin of error. Uh, if you were to run these tests again, maybe one machine would win over the other, but it's just going to show you that the M2 chip, and I'm feeling both of these machines, it's just not getting hot enough during these 10 minute exports to really impact the performance of the machine. So it does not have to thermal throttle down on the MacBook Air, and it's actually letting the MacBook Air beat the MacBook Pro in this instance. Now, if you ran these export tests with you know larger video files, uh, maybe multiple streams of 4K, then maybe uh, the MacBook Air would start to thermal throttle, but the M2 is just so well optimized for this, especially with the dedicated video decode and encode engines that the M2 chip has. So it does not generate as much heat when dealing with uh, video exporting, at least in Final Cut Pro. And again, great news for the MacBook Air here if you own one. But those are the final tests. So what did we learn from this video? Did the, would putting a fan inside the MacBook Air fix it? 
No. Yes and no, right? So listen, there is really, I think, even though there's a lot of controversy about this thermal throttling, I don't think there is anything wrong with the way that Apple has engineered this machine. They picked choices to make it have a thin fanless design, and that has benefits, like having lighter weight, like making sure you never hear the fan. Sometimes during these tests, I could hear the MacBook Pro fan spinning up, and ultimately what this means is if you're buying this laptop, you are getting a very thin and light machine with a lot of hardware benefits over this MacBook Pro. I mean, let me just rattle some of them off. You're getting an extra MagSafe charging port, which frees up the other two Thunderbolt ports. You're getting a nicer design, which is gonna be thinner overall, looks a lot nicer, um, has a bigger 13.6 inch display compared to the MacBook Pro's 13.3 inch display. It has a 1080p webcam, it has a new speaker system, it even has a high impedance headphone jack, and there are just a lot of hardware upgrades going to this MacBook Air, even though both of these machines cost exactly the same. Now on the MacBook Pro, you lose a lot by going for it. You get the smaller 13.3 inch display, you get a data design, you don't get the MagSafe charging port, uh, you don't even get the high impedance headphone jack. The webcam's still 720p, on this MacBook Pro. And the only real thing maybe you get is the touch bar. I mean, if you're a fan of the touch bar, maybe that's a, a benefit for you, but I think most people probably would be just fine or prefer the function key row at this point. So I think for 95% of the people watching this video, based on these tests, um, for most tasks, even performative tasks, and especially in short, bursty workflows, the MacBook Air is going to perform exactly the same. If you're an average user, you're just using this, especially for web browsing, messaging, music, watching YouTube videos, even if you're exporting in Final Cut at times, you're not gonna see a major difference between both of these machines. Now, for that 5% of you, for the smaller market, is the MacBook Pro redeemable for you? Maybe. I say that, again, 95% of people should get the MacBook Air, but there might be a small segment of the audience where this would be the right choice. And that would be if you plan on using this for gaming, I guess, or very heavy intensive GPU and CPU workloads where you would value that extra power. If you don't care about this new design, if you look at this MacBook Air and you don't care that it has a new design and if you wanted to make the more practical choice, all you cared about was getting as much performance as possible on a budget, and you can't afford something like the $2,000 14-inch MacBook Pro, and you need to save money, then yes, this 13-inch MacBook Pro still has its place. It's still technically the best performing Mac laptop at the lowest price point that you would be able to get with this M2 chip inside of it for the 10-core version. So. It does still have its place, but most people should just get this M2 MacBook Air. It is overall the much better laptop. But now, I actually wanna hear from you. You made it to this part of the video. I'm sure it's a long video, so you made it this long. So I really value your opinion. I wanna know, which laptop would you pick? Would you pick the MacBook Pro despite it not having a lot of the nice hardware upgrades that the MacBook Air has, just because it performs better thermally, or would you pick up the MacBook Air because it has all of those hardware advantages and you don't really care about the little bit of extra performance you might be able to eke out on the MacBook Pro? Really wanna hear from all of you in the comments below, so please let me know. As always, uh, if you wanted to buy the M2 MacBook Air or this M2 MacBook Pro, I will leave affiliate links down in the description below. It helps out the channel if you actually buy from them, so that would be a big help. And then also just thank you again for watching this video. Really hope you found it informative and I really hoped it helped you out with making a purchasing decision because I feel like this MacBook Air, we're running a lot of tests on it and people are giving it a lot of hate, but I think it performed very admirably in this test. And I really think that this is just a great machine overall. I like how thin it is. I like the decisions that Apple has made here and the thermal throttling, even though it does happen, and that is a negative, it doesn't really bother me that much. So again, thanks again for watching. And if you made it this far, again, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and, and let me know, what's the code word if you made it this far? Uh, in the comments below, why don't we say,
um, say espresso, but you know, just write espresso, write how much you love to drink a nice cup of espresso every day. And I'll know you got to this part of the video. All right, everyone. Thank you again so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.